Is the uh, screen share showing up okay for everyone's screen? I can see it. Yes. Okay, good. Yep, it's good for me. Very good. Okay. All right. It looks like we're queuing up to go live here. We should be live. Okay. Muting. There we go. Okay. Let's, okay. Uh, thank you. I will call the January 5th meeting of the Common Council to order. And I will ask our clerk to do a quick roll call. I think we need to unmute our clerk. All right, Alderperson Keen. Here. Isaac. Here. Ranky. Grote. Here. Stefanski. Here. Tenorio. Here. Vitali. Here. Weigel. Here. Grisham. Here. Haas. Here. Ranky. Rosie, you're on mute. Here. You hear me now? Yes. And present. Okay. Thank you. We have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, item C is the Pledge of Allegiance, which will be led this evening by Alderwoman Keene. Please rise if you are able and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And, oh my gosh. The Republic. For the Republic in which we stand, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right. We will now move on to item D on our agendas, which is public hearings. We have several uh, public hearings this evening. And I will ask the clerk to read our first public hearing. Resolution relative to the determination of an application for a special use permit for limited food production and restaurant use to be located at 66 Star Star West National Avenue, Lot 1. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mayor, members of the Common Council. Uh, Happy New Year. Um, the first hearing here is for the Mandel Group, who is proposing a development south of National Avenue referred to as SONA. As part of phase one, Mandel is proposing to convert two of the northernmost remediated brownfield sites, lot one and lot two, into multiple mixed use residential and commercial properties. The entire project is estimated to cost about 25 to $35 million. Developers, um, currently um, issued a letter of intent to the uh, city and is looking to uh, uh, redevelop the uh, initial, the first four acres. The, the first hearing here though, is gonna focus on the uh, 1.8 8 acre site, also referred to as lot one. And that's gonna be for the limited food production and restaurant use. The property is on C3 community commercial district and that allows limited food production, restaurants, cafes, outdoor dining, and the sort uh, within, that, uh, within that commercial zoning district. The blue areas you see there is uh, generally the, the area for this, uh, uh, for this site. This is just the general lot configuration overall. Uh, the certified survey map will be coming back to the, uh, will be coming to the Common Council in the future, but this just shows the configuration of lot one. Uh, the development is going to be taking place on the north end, northeast end of the site, 1.8 acres, and then this other longer uh, stretch of linear portion here running north-south from National down to Mitchell uh, will, will contain uh, off-street parking as well as access to the overall property. Uh, the, uh, this is just a closer view of the corner of Six Points Crossing or 66th Street and National Avenue. Um, as many, many of you may have seen the press release um, fairly recently for a uh, coffee roaster, uh, Valentine Coffee. Um, they're proposing, um, uh, the, the developers actually proposing a 17,000 square foot building, um, which would include uh, three, three buildings. They're all connected to look like uh, individual buildings, but it's actually one building, a 17,000 square foot building consisting of building A, which would be the anchor uh, coffee uh, roaster and retailer uh, of, of about 11,000 square feet. Building B would be the uh, loading and distribution and warehouse area uh, for that uh, Valentine use. 
And then building C would be a future unknown at this point, uh, retail or retailers within that uh, building C, a 6,000 square foot area within that building. The uh, uh, optimal uh, construction schedule here would be begin construction in uh, the spring of 2021 with initial opening in the fall of 2021. This is sort of the unit mix for buildings A and B would consist of roughly about 25% retail, another 25% for back of house and some office space, and then 50% for production, which would include roasting, grinding, storage, and shipping. So it's going to be an exciting new use, kind of a nice mix of some uh, production as well as retail uses uh, with some outdoor dining. There would also be an office or a mezzanine area on the second floor of the building as well. And the building C, as mentioned, is a future retailer unknown at this point. For the purpose of this special use, though, the overall hours of operation are going to be from 7 a.m. and uh, a.m. to 10 p.m., seven days a week. The outdoor dining area uh, times may differ just slightly from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. In terms of the parking, there's going to be 45 non-exclusive stalls for uh, the uh, Maker's Row parking, and that would be identified here on the site plan as in the everything in yellow. You see about 20 parking stalls on the street, mainly the south side of National Avenue, and then the uh, east, I'm sorry, west side of Six Points Crossing, also known as 66th Street, up to about this point. And then internally, another 25 parking stalls on site within the, uh, within the campus itself on that lot one. Now there's an additional 31 uh, employee parking, which are slated as employee parking stalls along the uh, portion of the uh, lot one area here that's in green. So the overall, the, the property is just shy of meeting our parking requirements. However, the council does have uh, uh, the ability to modify the parking requirement as they see fit. Uh, a total of 60 parking stalls are required. And based on what they're showing, you know, in terms of off street parking, they've got about 50, 50 I'm sorry, 70, uh, uh, 50, 56 parking stalls. Um, on, on site and another 20 uh, within the street. So they're, they're deficient about four. In terms of a bigger picture, in terms of the farmer's market parking plan, uh, historically this area was, a, a, you know, it's a brownfield site, uh, all steel, other salvage yards and so on. Uh, industrial uses once occupied this site. And more recently, uh, those buildings have been cleared, you know, decommissioned and sites purchased by the CDA and um, uh, the area just west of the farmer's market has been used for off-street parking, sort of a makeshift parking lot of sorts. So while there will be somewhat of a, a reduction in parking uh, for this area, it's important to note that there is already existing off-street parking within the area, 47 parking stalls on the farmer's market site itself, another 21 south of the farmer's market, and then 50, which are actually under the control of the school district, but can be used for farmer's market parking. In addition, uh, we're also uh, in negotiations with uh, a nearby church, St. Joe's Church, for some off-street parking there. And then with future development to the west, as this area develops, there is uh, discussions about another 160 or so off-street parking uh, just west of the Sona redevelopment area that we're talking about here. So there really won't be um, a drastic change other than, you know, you may have to walk a little further. Um, we're also talking with the health department and uh, our communications department about marketing some pot potential uh, scenarios where perhaps we could have uh, elderly and disabled persons park a little bit closer within the farmer's market premise itself um, uh, on, on busy market days, which are typically Saturdays. But there will also be those non-exclusive parking stalls that I had mentioned previously, which people could come and park within this area uh, on, on the busier days. And just in terms of architectural and some renderings of the maker's row, this is just to give you a taste of the architectural plans that are being presented and that have been approved by the Planning Commission. Um, uh, basically, uh, metal metal style, uh, decorative metal style uh, exterior with outdoor dining on the east side, uh, shallow pitched roof, window fenestration around the exterior, large expansive windows to allow transparency into the retail areas, 
to draw people in, to create the excitement between uh, passers-by on the street, people walking in the area, people living in the area. So it's meant to be a very walkable, bikeable area. And uh, there will also be off-street parking to support, uh, you know, not only new residents within the area, but people that come from out of town and the outlying areas to uh, whether to visit uh, these retailers or to, uh, to shop at the farmer's market or both. It's just another view from the uh, west, looking at the backside of the uh, coffee roaster. And so Planning Commission has recommended approval on December 2nd, and there have been no objections to date on this uh, proposed special use. Thank you for the presentation. Are there any questions from the Common Council? Mr. Mayor, Alderman Grisham. Um, I have a question regarding the flow of traffic there. Um, I know we're making a walkable environment. Now, 65th Street, if I stand correct, is uh, traffic lights. How, how will we be impacted by the flow of traffic in that er general area? With, um, to understand your question, so on, on 66th and, and National in, at the intersection here? Um, yes. That the timing of those lights, I guess, and um, you know, basically what's what's currently there, um, I, could be could be adjusted by city engineering if necessary. But the whole idea is, um, you know, with the bump outs that have been created at the uh, intersection itself between the farmers market and the um, uh, and the Sona area here, is to shorten crosswalk distances between you know from north to south sides of National Avenue as well as east to west from across Six Points Crossing. Um, there will be other right-of-way improvements along Six Points Crossing itself. Um, again, to do the same thing here between now, uh, you know, across Six Points from uh, the, the west to the east side and vice versa between the farmer's market and the, uh, the Sona development. Um, National Avenue in this, in this area has been um, redone uh, recently, again, to um, encompass the, uh, the West development just north of National Avenue. So there's been quite a bit of, I guess, streetscaping done in the, in the immediate area to hopefully calm traffic as best possible while still promoting street parking and also making it safer to cross the street. The signalization at the, at the corner there, uh, I'm not aware of any changes that are planned, but certainly um, you know, we could discuss that with city engineering as, as need be as things, as things evolve. Okay, thank you. Sure. Thank you. Any other questions from the council? Okay, hearing none, and uh, let's just ask, check in with the clerk if she would like on each of these, if we've received any correspondence from the public. I have not received any except for 1011. Okay, then I won't ask you every time. Okay. All right. And that will conclude public hearing number one. And I will ask the clerk to read out public hearing number two. Resolution relative to determination of an application for a special use permit for mixed residential and commercial use to be located at 66 Star Star West National Avenue, Lot 2. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mayor. Um, again, um, as part of the, uh, the overall SONA development, um, the, uh, the next lot we're gonna focus on here in hearing two is, is lot two, um, which consists of about an acre, uh, I'm sorry, 2.4 acres of, of land. It's identified here in the uh, uh, proposed configuration uh, on the CSM plat. And it fronts National Avenue, there's a rail spur immediately west. Um, it butts lot one to the, to the east. And again, this is all sort of uh, CDA land owned by the city currently. Mandel has expressed uh, again his, their their intent to um, purchase this property for the development of a 110 unit apartment building. Uh, it would be a mixed use apartment because it would also include about 5,000 square feet of um, commercial retail on both the north and south end caps of the building. This being the north and this being the south, uh, National Avenue in in front of the property here. So this is just a rendering uh, artistic view from National Avenue. Uh, this being the uh, North commercial end cap. And then you have three floors of uh, apartments um, on, on the uh, sort of wrapping around an L shape along the rail spur and then along National Avenue. The, uh, uh, again, the construction schedule is very similar. 
beginning in the spring of 21 and then opening in the summer of 22. Um, the 5,000 square feet of, of retail uh, is on both ends. So there's about 3,000 square feet on the uh, north and another 2,000 square feet on the south. There's also a pool as a, an amenity and a terrace that would be used by the north retail tenant. Uh, so yeah, the site does have a pool and a pond, the pool for the people, the pond for the stormwater. Um, and um, with the, the, the pond, it would actually be on a separate lot, lot four, but um, it would also accommodate a lot of the runoff you see from the parking lot here. In terms of parking, the 110 residential apartments and 5,000 uh, square feet of commercial uh, would require 100 Six, or I'm sorry, 194 parking stalls for the overall uh, combination of commercial and uh, residential offerings on the site here. There is a breakdown here um, of that. Um, there is um, going to be 164 parking stalls provided uh, on the site, which would include 89 underground parking stalls, another 41 uh, resident stalls here in light blue, and then another 24 uh, guest or visitor parking stalls here. Um, so there is, a, there is technically a shortage of parking, but in terms of that shortage, again, council does have the authority to modify that parking environment. And the rationale I guess that I would suggest council consider would be you know, past precedent with the West across the street to the North of National Avenue. Um, the West has 293 parking stalls, uh, while the zoning code requires 319. So there's roughly about a uh, 26 stall difference there. Um, and then Six Points Crossing also in the immediate vicinity has a uh, code requirement for 456 parking stalls, and but only 321 have been provided you know, on site in terms of surface and underground parking. So Council has made some exceptions in the past with the uh, you know, benefit of creating an urban uh, walkable environment. Um, you can't have the large uh, expansive uh, seas of asphalt or parking lots um, that you see in, in, in many suburbs or rural areas when you're trying to create a very urban, um, you know, dense neighborhood. So uh, quality is something, you know, that um, that, that trumps a lot and you know the quality that's been realized at the West development and the Six Points Crossing development um, has, has been something that's uh, been well received within the area and it, it, it's, it's lending itself here again south of National Avenue. We hope it, uh, for it to be equally as successful and lease up um, well ahead of schedule as realized with the West. So just another aerial you know, view conceptual parking area um, just showing those um, area uh, parking lots, both existing parking here in the gold, and then what we're, what we're working on creating with the church, and then future as things develop to the west, there's also this ability to create additional off-street parking immediately west of the Sona development. There will be landscaping. Uh, the parking lot will uh, feature, um, you know, stormwater, uh, runoff areas, uh, which will be captured and sent to a uh, stormwater pond as indicated in a previous slide. But then there's also going to be a considerable amount of um, uh, deciduous and evergreen plantings, perennial plantings within the parking lot to green it up, uh, not only within the parking lot, but also along portions of National Avenue and Six Points Crossing. Again, that creates the curb appeal. And in addition to the curb appeal created by landscaping, the architecture is going to be uh, one which will be cutting edge and modern in, in its appeal with different colors of, uh, you know, terracotta and darker, smoother, dark brown, bronze brick. Um, and there'll be different uh, types of metal cladding, a galvalume metal cladding on some of the upper expanses and balconies as well, uh, which will lend itself, uh, you know, very nicely to uh, what's already been created in the area and complement uh, complement the neighborhood. Just an example of some of the materials that are gonna be used. You can get a, a sense of the, uh, the colors and the palettes that are being created uh, as rendered. Some of the architectural plans, again, just the uh, different types of cladding, we can, uh, brick, metals, the balconies, lots of windows. 
and just some different views from within the uh, courtyard area where the pool, if you were standing near the pool and looking uh, to, the, to the west, there's a small uh, grass, grass area back here. Again, for uh, it's a common area amenity for residents. And then looking from the south to the north and then looking from National Avenue in a southeast direction. So Planning Commission has uh, taken this up back on December 2nd and approved it. There have been no objections to date. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Are there any questions from the Common Council on public hearing number two? Mr. Mayor? Alderperson Grisham? Um, again, I'm gonna go back to the parking uh, consideration and I love the, the idea of all this development but I'm, I'm concerned on that level of uh, lack of parking, even though I know that we're working toward that. As a business owner, I know how impactful it would be for sustainability and economic development, uh, that impact on businesses if parking is not available. Um, keeping in mind that the West Open, it's well received, but already in the deficit with the amount of parking for them is an overflow onto the streets. Adding more development would do the same. Um, I just want to point out, I, I love the design, I love the concept of the development, but I am really concerned how it will impact the community and businesses alike. I mean, it's a great idea opening a business, but if you don't have accessibility, um, and I know we're trying to make it a more walkable environment, uh, that, that may impact the businesses going in and their sustainability. I just want to make note of that. So I think the priority really would be is to, to obtain that level of parking that we need for these businesses and, and these new uh, apartments as well. So I just wanted to make a note of it. Okay. Any other questions from the council? Mayor Devine. Uh, Alderperson Keen. Yep. Um, Steve, I had a question um, also at the parking. Um, how many units is the complex again? 100, 110 units uh, for the apartments. But some of them are like two or three bedroom, correct? Yeah, there's a, uh, a mixture. There's um, one bedrooms. Um, let's see if I can go back here to that slide. Um, there were 34. Yeah, I've got like junior apartments. Junior, junior apartments, uh, which is basically a studio with a little bit larger studio with a partition to give a separation to the, uh, to the bedroom. Um, and then there's... Um, there. It's one more here. Um, did I skip it? My more concern is is not the businesses coming in. It's about um, potential residents and homeowners. Do we know? Do a lot of the homeowners around there? Is it? Um, do they have driveways and garages, or do a lot of them street park? I just I get a lot of calls about not being able to park on their street or having to park up the block due to the amount of cars. So that's really my only concern is more so for the um, residents who already live in the neighborhood that might have to park mm -hmm. on the street, how it could impact them. Sure. Yeah, there's going to be over. I mean, so in terms of um, the ratio of parking for this development, you can see the unit mix here, 110 units, the, the studio units, the junior one bedrooms, the one bedroom units, and then there's going to be six two bedroom units and eight three bedroom units. So, in terms of in terms of parking, um, it, the ratio is about 1.45, one point four five one and a half to one per unit. Um, so, it, it's very comparable, I, I guess, um, to the to the west. Um, it's uh, there, there's you know, there's going to be eighty nine underground parking stalls. There's going to be an additional uh, amount of surface parking for not only you know residents but uh, guests. Um, you know, in terms of other other homes within the area, um, most in the area include you know you've got a, either you know in terms of a single family home or a duplex, you typically have an alley with a detached garage, and sometimes a pad next to the garage for at least you know two to three parking stalls for a single family home. So. I would I would think most most of the homes within the area are going to have um, a place to park um, off street. Um, it's not to say that there are some out there that will rely on street parking exclusively, but um, 
you know, that's just the sort of the nature of the, of the historic East end of our city. Um, the traditional style of development was um, a house with a detached garage um, accessed from an alley. So um, this is really going to be, you know, its own, its own block. Um, and, um, you know, in terms of, of parking for residents, um, they're either going to have an underground parking stall or a surface parking stall um, for, for their, for their unit. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Any other questions from the council? Mr. Mayor. Alderman Vitale. Of course, it's my district, so I got to say my two cents worth of words, you know. The, uh, the fact that is, uh, in, in my, I always felt that, uh, you know, we always, in, in, any, in any business that we uh, been coming through on the East End in particular, we'll, we'll always experience some uh, problem with parking, you know. So in many cases, have been really uh, successful, you know. Sometimes we're not too happy about it, you know, uh, how things works. But, but the fact that is, we don't have the uh, expansion of the uh, rooms, you know, like maybe a, in a subdivision someplace uh, outside the uh, city limits, you know, maybe if you start going to, towards uh, past uh, New Berlin on and on, well, they got more room, you know, they got more land, you know, they could uh, provide more uh, space for this type of a business. But, but the fact that is that, uh, in many cases, things has been working forward for us. You know, uh, I, I, I think it would be a, a great uh, proposal, you know, and uh, for, for the area, you know, it's not the, the quantity of uh, what I call in fact, the uh, residential area, you know, I don't think it would be that critical, you know, to uh, yeah, both sides, the national, there is a planning park. I think people have thrown up use the uh, streets, you know, for, for, for anything, you know. So to me, I mean, uh, we not, again, we don't have the, uh, the quality of, to make some decision in many cases in, in reference of the uh, space. So we try, I think the uh, development department and on and on throughout the years, we try to accommodate many business because of the fact of restraint of spaces that, that we have. So and I believe this proposal does provide uh, you know, a lot of parking space, you know, underground parking, you know, 89 uh, underground stalls and, uh, and 41 above ground uh, stall for residents and on and on. So, so to me, uh, will, will be, uh, I believe some impact, you know, you know nothing sometimes it's, it's working the way we want it, but this is uh, a good proposal that's a, in time will be a good tax basis uh, for our city, not just for tomorrow, but in the future. You know, to me, that's uh, that's something that I believe we all sh we should be happy in time when Mantel will complete uh, all this developments. Uh, so uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Yeah. Any other questions from the Common Council? Hearing none, we have had no public comment on public hearing number two. So I will close public hearing number two and I will ask the clerk to read our third public hearing. Ordinance to amend the official West Allis zoning map by removing the PDD-2 planned development district, commercial and industrial districts overlay zone located at 66 six star star west national avenue mr chair thank you mayor um the, the existing pdd or planned development district uh overlay that was created back in 2016 was done so to create more flexibility in terms of uh multiple buildings on on a lot um, in this case the developer is proposing each development on its own individual lot we no longer need that I guess, flexibility or overlay district, so to speak. Uh, so we are uh, removing it from, um, from the map, the zoning map. Uh, the farmer's market, the PDD over the, over the farmer's market will remain, but the portion over the uh, Sona development will, will come off um, if, if council should so choose to, uh, to remove it with this ordinance. 
Planning Commission recommended approval and no objections to date. Thank you. Any questions from the Common Council on public hearing number three? Okay. Hearing none, we will move on to public hearing number four and I will ask our clerk to read item four. Ordinance to amend the official West Dallas zoning map by rezoning property located at 66 Star Star West Mitchell Street from M1 Manufacturing District to C3 Community Commercial submitted by the City of West Dallas. Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mayor. Um, our proposal here is to rezone the far southern portion where otherwise known as lot, lot four and a portion of lot one, which is zoned M1 to um, C3 community commercial that'd be consistent with the rest of the Sona property and um, establish it as such for uh, uh, right for future development, um, something similar to uh, what we just presented in previous public hearings. So planning commission recommend approval and there are no objections to date. Thank you. Any questions from the council on public hearing number four? Hearing none, we will close public hearing number four and I will ask the clerk to read public hearing number five. Resolution relative to determination of an application for a special use permit for a prospective brewing company, a proposed microbrewery to be located at 7506, 7508 West Greenfield Avenue. Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this is a directly across the street from City Hall at 7506 Greenfield, um, formerly uh, John's Shoe Service and then purchased and updated more recently by a new owner um, who has uh, sold it to um, a new property owner who is interested in developing a, a brewery, a uh, microbrew, which uh, it's zone C1, Central Business District or City's downtown. Food Production Limited is a special use within that zoning district. It's a 3,000 square foot building. And um, just some pictures of the renovated exterior, the rendered view down below and the finished product up above features large storefront windows on the front of the building. It was originally designed with a partition down the middle, but uh, it will be developed with as an open space within. Um, there is um, then going to be uh, room within for um, brewing their craft beers, which will and may be consumed on site, including other non-alcoholic beverages of their crafting. Um, they also feature a tap room, an outdoor beer garden, and then a food truck stall. There'd be seating for about 39 people within the building. And then also an additional 28 people outside the building. And I've got a site plan coming up next. The hours of operation are roughly from 9 a.m. to state mandated closing hours. Now, the owner is volunteering not to be technically open that late, but um, you know, they, they want to start out slow and then if uh, they, they could, I guess they, uh, the, the resolution indicates 9 a.m. to uh, state mandated closing time. Interior plans um, is shown here, um, just basically the front entrance, they show the, uh, the bar seating area um, beyond, um, and then also up in front near the windows. And then this area here would be um, open to the lower level or basement area where there'd be um, uh, the brew kettles that would be visible from the, uh, the seating area here. And then the restroom facilities um, further back in the, in the building. There's a smaller space, but um, an open concept, which would be very inviting and um, I think enjoyable for patrons. And just some sort of the, the, the theme of within the building here is popping up. In terms of the elevations, um, more or less continuing and keeping what's what's there on the exterior of the building. There's not too much to change. It's already been done. More of the changes are going to be to the rear yard area, which is pretty much unfinished. Um, uh, adding refuse enclosure, you know, you know, basically clean up of the exterior, um, fixing some ramps, adding double doors on the back of the building. Most impressive would be the beer garden behind the building and the parking area. Uh, for the food truck. Um, you would have uh, a number of tables, again, for roughly about 28 persons, um, the refuse area and um, uh, parking area back here for basically one, one parking stall um, as, as, and a food truck back behind the building. Mm -hmm. 
landscaping would also be added within the confines of a fenced area for the beer garden. And in terms of parking, 10 parking spaces are required. One parking stall is proposed on the site, um, but there are three you know, uh, uh, municipal parking lots uh, within a very close distance. So there, there shouldn't be a parking issue given the, uh, the amount of municipal parking uh, within the area. Planning Commission has taken a look at this back on December 2nd and there have been no objections received to date. Thank you. Are there any questions from the Alderman on uh, this public hearing? Chair Devine. Alderman Weigel. Um, Steve, could you go back to the parking? I, uh, I'm not sure, but I believe the 25 you're showing behind the post office. Mm -hmm. I believe that's all post office parking, isn't it? I would have to take a look at the lease. Um, I, yeah. I know there's definitely a lease over here for this. Uh, a lease parking. to the northeast, yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, and then on the food truck, was that going to be their own or were they going to invite in food trucks from other businesses? I believe it's you their know? own. Yeah, it's their own that would be parked on site and, and used. Okay. And a couple of weeks ago, we yes. talked about the food truck setback. Mm -hmm. So they would, would they need permission? from the pizza place to have a food truck there? I would expect so, uh, given the um, proximity. Um, yeah. It's important to note though, that this, I guess the principal use here from a zoning perspective is that- it, No, uh, I'm, no I understand that. We're talking about a brewery. Order, yeah. Yeah. I just, yeah, I just wanted, I just wanted to make sure that the applicants, the applicants know about that, you mm -hmm. know, um, don't know. I, I think in the downtown, most of us, all of us neighbors get along very well. We look out for each other. We try to help each other, but um, I don't know. I just, I just want, I get, I just I make sure the applicant's aware of that. Okay. So, okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Alderman Weigel. Any other questions from the council? Okay. Hearing none, then we will close public hearing number five and I will uh, ask the clerk to read public hearing number six. Resolution relative to determination of an application for a special use permit for a piece of love or proposed bakery to be located at 6768 West Lincoln Avenue. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, piece of love is a proposed bakery that uh, is intending to occupy a former barber shop space, tenant space within the, uh, the building at uh, the intersection of Beloit Road, Lincoln Avenue, and uh, 67th Place. Um, it's zone C2, neighborhood commercial. Bakeries are considered a special use within that zoning district. And our public hearing is tonight. Um, so the, uh, uh, their, their intent is to create um, you know, unique and personalized cakes, desserts, uh, balloon and floral arrangements. The hours of operation are you know, basically Mondays through Fridays from 10 a.m. to uh, roughly almost 7.30 p.m. And then Saturdays, Sundays, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Small offering of employees to, to start the business. Um, and uh, the next slide shows the, the general floor plan within the building. Not much is taking place in the outside. I mean, they've got storefront windows and it's a brick exterior building um, with, on, the, on the front of the store. Um, upon coming in, there'd be a sales area, you know, point of sales area, small office, and then the bakery kitchen, you know, production area a little further back with storage and then um, an exit out to the rear of the building where there's a small parking area. And while there are no architectural changes, there are some um, uh, planned uh, uh, tuck pointing um, and just general freshening up of the exterior of the building. There's one parking stall in the rear of the building. The site's gonna, as it has for you know, generations, it's primarily relied on either uh, walk up or um, you know, street parking within the area. Um, there is going to be a refuse enclosure that's going to be added behind the building. And in terms of street parking or parking in general, uh, five parking stalls are required. You know, one's going to be provided on the site as shown on the uh, general concept plan here towards the rear off the alley. Um, but the site uh, does uh, have benefit from, you know, nearby streets, um, 67th place, 68th street, Beloit Road also has some limited parking availability. 
they're not intending a lot of customers every day. So um, we don't anticipate a, a problem that's going to negatively impact the, uh, the neighborhood. Steve, Steve, I have a question, uh, if you don't mind. Uh, Go ahead, a, Ellie. Yeah, uh, sorry about that, Mayor. I sh should That's all right. Apologize for that. No, go ahead, sir. Uh, the uh, the place actually has, uh, I mean, uh, most of the uh, business place, which now has been kind of uh, sad to see that many businesses were gone, you know, and I, so I'm so glad to see somebody coming in on that corner. But there's a parking space, there's a parking lot to which it belongs to the uh, to the owner of the uh, of that property. So so all the uh, customers they can utilize the parking lot. There's you know there's a lot of space there. You know probably you know in any time probably at least twenty some car they fit back there. So I think it belongs to the uh, you know for any business that are on that corner there. You know Beloit and Lincoln. You know so I mean I, I'm surprised it was not brought up. Uh, to the attention that uh, that's part of the uh, the uh, structure there. I mean, for the business, they always uh, been years. There used to be a barber shop there, other business. Everybody used to utilize that parking lot, you know, on Lincoln Avenue. They come in from uh, you know from Lincoln and going into 68 because north it's one way north, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, and again, I know, to me that's. I mean, it should be no problem for parking. You know, people, they want to park on 67 place north of Roy Road. Well, that's fine for five minutes, 15 minutes. But still, they can utilize the uh, parking lot just as well. So I'm surprised it wasn't brought up to the uh, to this uh, applications, you know. Yeah, we can we can take a closer look at that element, uh, Vitaly. Fine, Steve, good point. Um, out, but you know? yeah, we, we will do so. Thank you. So thank you, Steve. Thanks. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Yep, you're welcome. Mr. Sher, did that conclude or did you have some more? Uh, nope, that we're, that's a good point to wrap it up. Plan Commission okay, recommended perfect. approval and no objections to date. Thank you, thank you. Any other questions then from the members of the council? Okay, then we will close public hearing number six and we will, um, I will ask the clerk to read public hearing number seven. Resolution relative to determination of an application for a special use permit for visibility center for proposed training, counseling, or workforce development facilities operated by a not-for-profit social service organization for the purposes of enabling jobs and career opportunities for persons with sensory or physical disabilities to be located at 1540 South 108 Street. And I do have a letter to read for this whenever you're ready for that. Thank you. Let's, let's, should we do that after the presentation? Works for me. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so as, as indicated, the uh, proposed uh, training workforce development for a nonprofit organization is considered a special use within the C3 uh, commercial zoning district. And Beyond Vision or the Visibility uh, Center has expressed, uh, has, has purchased the property back in uh, 2018 with the intent of uh, mobilizing their efforts here under one roof at this location. Um, the, uh, the use will consist of um, about 47% um, uh, of it will be uh, administrative and commercial services. Um, with another 25% or 32,000 square feet uh, being light manufacturing. And another 38 or so percent uh, would be mixed commercial and light manufacturing services. So uh, different types of things, you know, here we have your, the different phases shown here. This phase one area would be the thing, uh, the, the portion of the building that would uh, be designed and constructed first where they'd start moving their uh, production equipment in they do have a very small machine shop. Um, and then aside from that, supportive of that would be their assembly, kitting, and um, uh, uh, area where, where employees put things together and, and feed you know, some of the machine shop. Um, and then in the front, the phase two portion would come online uh, uh, later, uh, later this year. And that would consist of more of the commercial aspect um, of uh, under this roof. Their current employment is about 112 jobs. The future employment, they hope to grow to up to 300, potentially 300 jobs over the next several years. 
the hours of operation are from 6.30 in the morning to 6 p.m. in the evening. Again, sort of the, both the, the combination of office staff and uh, production and uh, light manufacturing staff. They do anticipate some truck traffic as there is a loading dock in the back of the old Sam's Club. Um, mainly, um, you know, there, are, there are a couple you know, smaller UPS types of parcel trucks, but then they would have potentially up to five semi trucks per workday. In terms of uh, the overall layout, they're proposing to substantially remove a, a large, you know, considerable amount of parking space, converting it to green space, um, inserting uh, connections, sidewalk and walking path connections throughout the site that would uh, both benefit uh, people on their break times, but also um, be supportive of making connections to uh, existing sidewalks within public right of way along Highway 100, Orchard Street and West Lapham Street. Um, a large portion of their uh, business, um, you know, their employment base does uh, rely upon um, public transportation. Um, and they have, and this just the slide here just shows that there's 646 parking stalls today. And that was developed under the, you know, the Sam's Club realm. And then with the proposed changes, removing that some of that pavement for green space, um, the overall use um, for the visibility center will require 255 parking spaces. And um, they're going to provide 299. So they're removing some, you know, 300 some parking spaces from, from the mix here. Um, but then they're also, you know, building in that, um, the, those paths and walking paths to connect to bus stops, to connect to the city sidewalks and so on. Um, and there's, there's a ongoing effort right now that's taking place with uh, WSDOT as well as Milwaukee County Transit System, uh, Wisconsin Department of Transportation and the Milwaukee County Transit System to coordinate efforts for uh, best, you know, towards best practices of, you know, people that come to work in the morning, people that leave work, um, just coordinating the various shifts. Um, there's um, a strong possibility that a, a bus uh, could be dedicated to actually depart from its, um, uh, its route and then actually enter the site and uh, drop people off, pick people up um, to and from work. Um, so there's, there's quite a bit of an effort going on uh, between, you know, planning and then those um, county transit and WSDOT as well as Beyond Vision to, to make that a reality. Um, other amenities on the site would include a dog run and a patio area and then updating the exterior lighting on the overall property. There's quite a bit of improvements that are going to be taking place on the, on the overall site. And there's just a copy of the uh, slide of the landscaping plan to represent the, the changes that are going to be, you know, removing a lot of asphalt, putting in the green space. And then this next slide just shows some of the connections that are being built in. Um, you can see their employee transport mode to work. 15% use county, Milwaukee County Transit. Another 15% are Lyft or Uber, you know, family or friends. And then 70% are going to be using you know, a paratransit type of service. And then some of these other things are uh, efforts that we're working with them on and coordinating, you know, with the green dots here being existing bus stops. There's another bus stop, obviously, north uh, on Greenfield Avenue, but according to the best route to work with making sure that crosswalks and, um, you know, safe passage, you know, from the bus stop up to the front door to the entrance um, is, is a possibility. So all those things are, are coming together and will be part of the uh, finished product as we, as we move forward. The staff's working with them on that. In terms of exterior architecture, the building will be um, you know, repainted a new color. Um, the brick and stonework that was previously in place with Sam's Club will remain and it will remain unpainted. Just the existing painted portion of the building will be changed and, and updated. There's some doors, garage doors that were at the Sam Service Center a tire service center uh, that as a part of a future um, uh, renovation, they're, they're looking at uh, converting those to glass doors. That would be an employee uh, break area and common area. So planning commission uh, has taken a look at this and on December 2nd, they recommended approval. I've received no objections to date. Thank you. Are there questions from the common council on public hearing number seven? Mayor Devine. 
Alderperson Grisham. Uh, I have a question for Steve here. I noted that, um, and I just have to say the design is great. I really love the fact that green space is being created. Um, I noted though, that the dog run and patio area, um, mm -hmm. what is the plans for that being it's, you know, uh, uh, employment for visually impaired is that their service dogs per se, is this going to be open to the general public? Um, several questions, fenced in area, non fenced in area. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the fencing, it will, it will definitely be fenced in, uh, ornamental style of, of fencing around the exterior, um, similar to our, our city dog park, um, uh, beyond vision may actually want to adjust that a little taller, but uh, we're working with them on that. And then in terms of the usage, uh, my understanding is that it would be, uh, uh, for their private use for their employees and, you know, patrons that are coming there, um, either for a, uh, to, to work that, that bring their service dogs with them, um, they, they would be for their use. It wouldn't be a, a public dog park. Okay. And secondly, would that be a locked area then after their business hours that it wouldn't be accessible? I would expect so. I, I don't have the uh, an absolute affirmative uh, yes or no uh, yes on that, but um, I, I would expect so. And uh, we can certainly uh, uh, follow up with you on that. All right. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Any other questions from the council? Okay, hearing none, there was one um, comment the clerk had received. Yes, I received a letter today from Jed Moss. Um, Greetings, Mayor Devine and members of the West Dallas Common Council. My name is Jedediah Moss, and I've been an employee at Beyond Vision for almost two years. Before my employment here, I lived in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Being legally blind, it was difficult for me to find decent work. I washed dishes in a restaurant for a time, cleaned hotel rooms, and at one point even worked for the Salvation Army. None of these jobs paid well, however, and after many years of applying for decent factory work and getting turned down for safety reasons, I had decided that enough was enough. Friends of mine that I had gone to school with at Wisconsin School for the Visually Handicapped in Janesville had started working at Beyond Vision and told me that it was a decent place to work, paid well, had city hours, and offered opportunities for advancement. After some thought and some planning, I decided to leave the Upper Peninsula and move to West Dallas so that I could get a job with Beyond Vision. Since working here, I've been able to make good enough income to get approved for a home loan. I was named Employee of the Year in 2019 and promoted to a lead position assembling deployment kits for the US United States Army. Some people take a decent paying steady job for granted, but I am definitely not one of those people. I'm thankful for my company, which is why I'm sending you this communique. I am certainly not the only person who has benefited greatly from employment at Beyond Vision. Our new location in West Dallas will be a magnet for new West Dallas residents who are motivated to contribute and maximize their potential as leaders. I sincerely hope that you take my words into consideration. Thank you, Jedediah Moss. Thank you for sharing that with us. Um, assuming there were no other questions from the council, we will close public hearing number seven and I will ask our clerk to read public hearing number eight. Resolution relative to determination of an application for a special use permit for a proposed cafe with a former, within a former office building to be located at 6923 West Beecher Street. Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the Dessert Cafe is um, owned by uh, Mark Lutz, uh, property management, and he has uh, purchased this building with the intent of developing a small a boutique shop with a um, uh, cafe for a limited amount of seating, about four to five seats. Uh, the property is zone C2, neighborhood commercial, which does, uh, does allow restaurants or cafes within that uh, zoning district along Beecher Street. The, um, they are pursuing a um, a, a liquor license. Um, they will be serving, you know, teas, cakes, torts, you know, the some sweets. Um, they're not going to be producing that here like a traditional bakery would. 
those types of products, uh, the suites and, you know, boutique items will be purchased, uh, you know, wholesale somewhere else, brought in here, kept cool until served on site or taken away for offsite consumption. But the, um, the owner operator is pursuing, uh, would like to pursue a liquor license to service, uh, serve wine along with other uh, non-alcoholic beverages such as coffee and tea on site. Uh, the hours of operation are 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. daily. Uh, again, small number of tables. Uh, there will be a, a very small outdoor patio area uh, for about two tables outside. There will be some updates to the exterior, some fabric awnings, new windows, new door, um, the cooler addition on the back side of the building. And the building is very small. Uh, you can see the um, building here, there's a cooler on the back side. That cooler is actually going to be uh, detached from the building. It will not be connected and you will not, won't be able to pass through from the main building to the cooler. It's actually going to be a separate, a separate unit. Uh, but there will be a, a small parking lot for about four parking stalls. Um, the shed will remain. Uh, there's a grass area behind the building as well, which will remain. Uh, there's a fenced, uh, a fenced in uh, backyard um, along the uh, west side of the property which will help buffer the, uh, the parking area, the shed, and um, the, uh, the new cooler. Um, so there, the parking spaces required are five, um, and then what's provided on site is you know, four parking stalls. Uh, Beecher Street is, um, does offer um, on-street parking as well. And uh, you know, as, as far as, you know, I guess, from the staff planning perspective, uh, Planning Commission has recommended approval on December 2nd, and um, uh, we've received no objections to date. Okay, thank you. Are there questions from the Common Council on this item? Mayor Devine. Alderman Weigel. Uh, question for you, Steve. Um, obviously, we're not, we're not approving a, the, the wine license or liquor license today. Um, I'm just curious how, if you know how important that is to the business model in the event that, the, I mean, I, does the whole thing hinge on getting that license sometime in the future? Do you know? I don't, I don't think I, the applicant is on this meeting. No, I, not, not to my knowledge. I mean, it was, it's a, it's a preference, um, you know, certainly, um, but it, it's, I don't know that it's a, a deal breaker. Right. Okay. I just, I just wanted to make sure, cause we haven't heard from the neighbors yet, obviously on sure. that. And there'll be a public hearing on that liquor license when the time comes. Is that correct? I would, uh, I would defer to, um, our clerk's office uh, or city attorney on, on that question. Uh, I'm not. It'll certainly be, Mr. Chair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. It would certainly be scheduled for a hearing for before the license and health committee. I don't believe we do the um, public hearings public before the council. Okay. okay, okay. But I mean, would the neighbors be notified on that? I'm, I, we just had some other issues that other applicants, not with this, not with this individual, but other applications for other properties. Where I just wanted to make sure that, that yeah. and I, 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 I can't imagine everybody's going to have a problem with, you know, cheesecake and a glass of wine. But I, I just want to make sure the neighbors get notified if something change like that came along. So, I can work with the attorney's office on the notification options. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from the Common Council? Mayor Devine. Alderperson Grisham. Uh, just to have clarity, you said that there was a Steve. You said that there was four uh, spaces in the business itself and a proposal for an outside <clears throat> patio. Does Is it specified how many people, uh, what the uh, limit of seating out there would be? One and two tables, I understand. Yeah, I mean, there's small, very small bistro tables. I would... Uh, I don't have an exact number, but I would, you know, if you, you know, the very small tail, probably four, four persons outside um, and up to probably another 15 or 16 inside potentially. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions on uh, public hearing number eight? Oh, actually, the mayor divine, I have one more question uh, in the, in the business plan, would there be, um, Proposals for like music and other things kind of have that uh, outside at all? 
I, uh, that hasn't been indicated um, as, of, as of yet in the planning application. Um, that would have to, uh, you would have to ask for the appropriate uh, permits or licenses for that, that type of activity. Okay, thank you. Sure. Any other questions? Hearing none, we will close public hearing number eight. And I will ask the clerk to read public hearing number nine. Resolution relative to determination of an application for a special use permit for Pope Auto Works, an existing vehicle repair business, to amend their special use permit to include indoor auto sales at 10214 West Greenfield Avenue. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Pope Auto Works is an existing auto repair shop um, on 102nd and Greenfield Avenue. Um, their, their existing special use that was approved in 2015 um, is being is requested to be amended to add indoor vehicle sales within the, uh, the building uh, at 10214 uh, West Greenfield Avenue. The site actually consists of two properties, um, an auto repair property here and another one on the 10214 site. So it's this site, the western of the two sites, the one on the left here that they're proposing to have um, uh, between about maybe approximately two to three um, vehicle uh, for sale within the building. In the C3 commercial district, which this property is zoned, does allow for um, indoor uh, vehicle sales. Um, unlike some other commercial districts like the C4 commercial or the M1 manufacturing district, uh, th those heavier, more intensive districts allow outdoor uh, dis car sales or displays, um, uh, like traditional car dealership. The C3 is different in that you cannot have those outdoor display areas. You can only have indoor sales. Uh, so that's what Mr. Pope is requesting to do here. He's proposing to continue his vehicle um, auto repair service operation as he's been approved to do back in 2015, but he just wants to complement um, uh, the, his business with uh, indoor auto sales within this uh, western of the two buildings here. So in terms of the nature of, of how he plans to do this, he does currently allow for courtesy, he, he provides courtesy uh, or amenity you know, vehicles as amenity to his customers. So if they're in for a uh, repair that's gonna last a few days, um, while he's awaiting parts, um, he can offer the, his customers a, a courtesy vehicle or a loaner vehicle. Um, it's those loaner vehicles that he'd like to at least offer for, for sale. It'll be a very discreet marking within the vehicle um, that this vehicle is for sale. It would not be your traditional car lot uh, with uh, cars lined up outside for sale. This is gonna be within a building with a very discreet message inside the car that uh, informing the customer that if they'd like, this, this vehicle is for sale. The hours of operation are not going to change. They're going to remain the same. Um, Monday through Friday, 7.30 to 5 p.m. And then Saturday, 8 to noon. Um, the number of parking stalls on, on site really isn't changing either. Um, and back in 2015, uh, I'd like to add that, you know, the exterior of the buildings has been uh, remodeled and the site um, was, was upgraded quite a bit from, you know, asphalt uh, the previous look was asphalt coming right out to the sidewalk. Um, as you can see in this closing slide here, um, there's been quite a bit of landscaping added and uh, to buffer, um, you know, the Vista from Greenfield Avenue and, and 102nd Street. So Planning Commission has recommended approval. There have been no objections that have been received to date. Thank you. Are there any questions from the council on this item? Mr. Mayor. Alderperson Grisham. I would just like to note uh, the Popes are a real valued business in, in District 3. I, I just applaud them for their efforts and expansion on this and did have a question related to the zoning with no um, signage outside. Are they able to advertise and or post, you know, signage inside the windows, anything like that? As far as marketability of these cars, are they looking just to, you know, kind of work within? Uh, just yeah, curious how that would work if there would be signage available in the windows. Uh, not, it, it would not be. I mean, based on what Mr. Pope has indicated to me and as part of his um, 
planning application description, he's indicated it'd be a very discrete marking within the car. So you wouldn't even know the vehicles for sale unless you're, unless you're sitting in the vehicle um, with your hands on the wheel and uh, somewhere perhaps on the dashboard or um, maybe behind a visor or something, you would have some marking in there just indicating that it's this, this car is for sale if you're interested. So. Um, okay. yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. Sure. Any other questions from the council? Okay. Hearing none, we will close uh, public hearing number nine. And regarding public hearings 10 and 11, I believe 11 is going to be held. And I think number 10 may also be held because they're both of these items will be referred to safety and development. Mayor, we still have to have the hearing. Okay. I believe 11 is held or, or am, I, am I wrong? I thought I was told that this morning. Number. Yeah, go ahead. It, it, they're going to be taken off of the consent agenda, but we still have to have the public hearings on them and then it'll get okay. referred to committee. Okay. Then we will go on and um, I'll ask the clerk to read uh, public hearing number 10. Ordinance to amend the official West Dallas zoning map section 12.05 to rezone property located at 19 star star South 76th street from M1 light manufacturing to C2 neighborhood commercial district. I do have a comment on this one. Okay. Um, Mr. Sherry, you want to click through the presentation? Sure. Thank you, mayor. Um, the property is uh, located at 1900 block of South uh, 76th street, uh, commonly known as 76th and Hicks, um, the, the intersection, the result, the zoning of the property is currently M1 light manufacturing. And we're looking at just more or less aligning this property with our future land use plan, which calls for this site to be, uh, developed or rezoned to commercial. So in light of our 2030 future land use plan, we'd like to, we're recommending that the council rezone this from M1 manufacturing to C2 neighborhood commercial district. We feel strongly that uh, this change uh, to a commercial neighborhood commercial zoning district would be much more compatible and conducive to the surrounding neighborhood, which a large part of which is uh, single family residential or low density residential. So um, we're also gonna be looking at um, uh, redeveloping this site too for in which you know uh, as a c2 use um, you could could realize a number of uh, more compatible uses um, within this neighborhood such as uh, office showrooms um, mixed use it would even allow for apartment developments on this site which again would be much more uh, compatible than um, uh, potentially a, a storage yard or you know something of a manufacturing sort so planning commission recommended approval at December 2nd meeting. And uh, as indicated, there are, there are some neighbors that have called planning and our clerk's office with uh, an older persons with some concerns, um, it, mainly like what, what's going on and why the change, uh, what's the rationale. But um, in, from the planning perspective, it's really to, to best align our, um, our land use plan with our, uh, in the zoning to, to commercial and then to also protect the uh, surrounding neighborhood from um, some heavier, uh, net, you know, more incompatible manufacturing uses. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions on public hearing number 10 from the council? Okay, hearing none, I'll ask the clerk to read the, uh, the public comment. Um, I spoke with uh, Karen Johnson, who's the owner <laughs> property at 192022 South 76th Street. Regarding the rezoning, um, she just wanted to share that she's concerned with the rezoning to commercial. Her preference is to have this location zoned for residential or have a park there as was previously discussed. Thank you. Uh, if there's no other, if there are no other questions on public hearing number 10, we will close that. Mayor Devine, I'm sorry, I do have one question. Sure, go ahead. Um, Steve, what's currently there? It's um, uh, currently an undeveloped property. It's a grass, a grass lot. But prior to that, it was a commercial dry cleaner. 
um, and it's currently owned by the Steiner Corporation, who is who was the commercial dry cleaner uh, operator at the time as well. So, okay, that was going to be my next question. Thank you. Sure. Sure. Any other questions? Okay, we will close public hearing number 10 and I will ask the clerk to read uh, public hearing number 11. Ordinance to amend the official West Dallas zoning map section 12.05 to rezone commercial property zoned M1 light industrial to M2 heavy industrial. And I do have one letter or okay. email regarding that. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Mr. Chair, continue with your marathon. Thank you, Mayor. Um, as indicated prior, this this is one of the items that uh, will be sent to committee for further discussion, as there are some some concerns. But uh, in terms of the presentation for the zoning um, between '95 and uh, 2019, the city has only had one manufacturing district. It's labeled M1 on our zoning map. In 2019, the council passed an ordinance to um, create a second uh, zoning district. So now we have we've. We've redefined the, the M1 district to be a light industrial district and the, M, the new M2 district is a heavy industrial district. It's important to note though that the, um, uh, the rules uh, with, uh, were created within the zoning book, so to speak. So the ordinance, the text is created and it's, it currently exists within the zoning book that we have a light manufacturing district and a heavy manufacturing district. However, we don't have the M2, the heavy industrial areas mapped so this is really a mapping exercise to put the M2 on the, on the map, so to speak. Here are all the, um, all the zoning districts within the city. The M1 areas um, are identified. The light industrial areas are identified on the map here in the dark purple areas with the M1 designation. And then isolating just the M1 areas within the city, there's about 1,100 acres or about 389 properties that are zoned M1, light industrial. And light industrial is lower intensity, um, non-nuisance typically. Um, uses include light fabrication, uh, assembly, manufacturing, commonly warehousing, distribution, self-storage. Outdoor storage can take place within light manufacturing in some extents. Um, there's also research and development facilities that are commonly within light manufacturing districts. They can be located um, in proximity to residential and commercial districts um, as they are uh, typically not gonna be uh, high generators of odors or noises or uh, other nuisance factors. M2 on the other hand are typically larger scale facilities uh, which will be higher intensity manufacturing and production facilities. Uh, common uses would include freight, trucking terminals, forage and casting shops, concrete batch plants, waste management, um, heavy mechanical and equipment operations. So in terms of the recommended proposed M2 areas, what staff has laid out here um, would be all of the M1 areas that we were shown in that previous slide are, are currently still there. Um, and we're not, the M2 areas that we're recommending or that we have recommended previously, you know, to the safety and committee were are overlaid on top of those, you know, existing industrial areas. On the far east side of the city, also a little bit further west along the rail spur, the Union Pacific rail spur, this is unit drop forage here. And then north to 70th and Washington Street, roughly, the 6600 block of Washington Street. Historically, this area was Ellis Chalmers. And then a far northwest corner of the city, um, 116th and uh, Curtis Road is the, is the other uh, proposed area. And just taking a closer look at each one of these areas, this is that northeastern portion of the city where, you know, historically, Ellis Chalmers, our namesake, uh, grew out of 33 acres of land, seven properties. This is one of the concerns that's been raised tonight that, um, you know, with the Whitnell Summit office complex here, there is concern that um, this M2 area would be um, a problem for, you know, sustaining quality office development within this area. Moving on to a little further south, the unit drop forage area is seven acres, and then another 24 acres um, on, on the southeast portion of the city. 
this is the Columbia Pipe property, and this property is a flex industrial. And, um, and then you have a, um, uh, a Coakley property, uh, Roadster Rogers property here, which uh, is basically fulfillment center in this area in our city's waste transfer station. On the far northwest corner of the city, um, you have roughly about 71 acres or 24 properties, 116th, um, everything west of 116th more or less. And then Curtis Road runs through the center of it. Uh, places like Langer Roofing, uh, Signego Ready Mix, Pablocki Asphalt, uh, Lead Environmental, um, RB uh, Chemical Company, um, uh, to name a few uh, within that area. So in, in, in total, those, those, are the, those are the areas that were, were recommended as being rezoned to M2. Um, there are some questions often with uh, non-conforming uses and, um, you know, can I, can I use my property if it becomes, if the, if the zoning change, does the property become non-conforming? Non-conforming uses are uh, a use, when, you know, when a zoning district is applied to a property that does not allow the use that was legally established under the previous zoning district. And, you know, sometimes as part of our zoning efforts, um, you know, properties do become non-conforming. So there are some questions here that we can run through and we'll go into more detail on this at the uh, special meeting uh, next week. But, um, you know, just a common question is, can I still use my property if it's non-conforming, if it becomes non-conforming? And the answer is yes, you can, you can continue to use it. Non-conforming uses may continue to operate. Uh, and typically there's three criteria. The existing use of land remains the same, you know, despite the zoning change or the use of the land is the same as the previous use without lapse. Lapse meaning, and the, to the third point, uh, lapse meaning more than 12 months. So if a property lapses, it means that it's uh, become unoccupied uh, for more than 12 months. And another common question is, can I change the use of the property if it's non-conforming? And the answer is yes, you're allowed to, by right to change a non-conforming use to any of the uses permitted in the zoning district on your property. And you can expand non-conforming uses as well, but the expansion must be limited to the uh, existing non-conforming parcel itself. You can't purchase another property next door and expand onto that um, unless the property is so zoned to do so. Um, if a property is damaged or you know destroyed, you know the state law actually does does allow property owners to rebuild non-conforming uses in the event of a loss caused by natural forces. And then there's you know we can get into if you if you wish I mean the differences between the M1 and the M2, uh, but perhaps right now I mean I I would just finish right now with uh, indicating that um, you know the planning commission has recommended approval at the December second meeting. Um, we're here tonight to announce the public hearing. Uh, we did have a uh, uh, neighborhood meeting back on November 19th uh, with the uh, industrial property owners. Um, it, uh, it wasn't uh, very well attended, but I um, mean, we, we did follow up with a uh, notice and then planning commission meeting followed by tonight's public hearing. So um, I'll open it up for questions uh, at, at this point if, if desired. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions from the Common Council? Okay, hearing none, and we had no public comment, correct? There were, yeah, there was Go ahead. The one, nothing new. Yeah, I mean, I, I did receive a, a couple questions, phone calls from um, uh, roughly about three property owners. Okay. Questioning what the what the changes were, and then there was definitely one communication, you know, objecting to the uh, the M two change uh, yes. in their vicinity. Yeah. Okay. So we are now safe to conclude and close public hearing number eleven. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So that will be closed. That will conclude our public hearings this evening, and we will move on to item E. Chair Devine. Alderman Lysak. Under section three point oh five. Parent 29 of the Municipal Code, I move to suspend the rules to allow for the alternate order of business on this meeting's agenda. Second. There's a motion and a second. Um, all in favor of suspension of the rules? Aye. 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 
Anyone opposed? Okay, the rules are suspended. We will go on to item F for the mayor's report this evening. I just want to just take a quick second to wish everybody a happy new year. I think I can safely say we are all looking forward to 2021 and uh, we are looking forward to a much better year than 2020 was to us. And um, the one thing I've been really trying to push out is uh, holidays are over. We're entering the, the long spell of winter and I'm just asking people to continue to take extra efforts to support our small business and our local business community uh, as you do your, your shopping or your dining or your carry out. Um, I remind people that these are the businesses that were donating gift cards and gift baskets for our school activities, for our little leagues. And um, as you go into January, February, even March before we're gonna be able to dine outdoors again, uh, just please keep them in your in your mind as you shop and and if you're looking to order something from amazon just think twice and think if you can get it from a local store before um, before you order online that concludes the mayor's report this evening moving on to item g do we have any older persons reports mayor divine Alder person grisham um i just want to take a moment <laughs> to uh, publicly acknowledge our dp tub dpw obviously we had a substantial snowfall and i think for the most part um, the feedback was positive. Uh, they're continuing cleanup efforts. And I wanted to mention our Snow Angels program. Uh, Snow Angels program is where we pair seniors or disabled with volunteers throughout the city, um, offering to volunteer their time to help clear sidewalks and driveways for these people. Um, I put a plea out on one of our uh, neighborhood events page uh, because at the time we had 37 requests and only 22 volunteers. I um, would really encourage people to take a look at this program to help people out. As of now, uh, we have 47 requests and only 38 volunteers. So please find it in your heart to volunteer uh, if you can. Thank you. Any other reports from the older persons? Mayor Devine. Alderman Lysick. I move for approval of the minutes of the Common Council meeting of December 15th, 2020. Second. second. There's a motion and a second. Were there any changes to the minutes? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Eyes have it, the minutes are approved. Item I, I'll ask for a motion to refer items 13 through 16 to the city attorney. So move. Second. There's a motion by older person Ranky and a second by, I don't know. Vitaly. Vitaly, we'll give it to Vitaly. <laughs> right. That's okay, Mayor. All right, um, all in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Now we'll move on to item J, the consent agenda portion. Are there any issues for separate action or referrals to committee this evening? Mayor Devine. Alderman Lysick. Um, I would recommend at the request of Alder Persons Weigel and Vitelli that items 21 and 24 be referred to Safety and Development Committee for further action. <clears throat> and move them off of the consent agenda. And with that, I would move to adopt, approve, and receive all matters on the consent agenda as presented or as recommended by staff. Thank you. Mayor, no, Mayor Devine. Alder person wrote. I think this is my time to separate out number 28. Yes. Yep. That's what I'd like to do then. Now okay. back the committee just for vote. Separate action? Yes, vote only. Okay. okay. Thank you. And Mayor Devine? Yes, Alderman Haas. I move to amend item 18 on our consent agenda. There's one minor clerical correction which requires this amendment. I think we all received an email on it and um, I can go into the specifics further if you wish. It's just a, again, it's a, appropriate to call it a clerical amendment and I'll also add that it's in the city's favor that it saves the city some money. Very good. So why don't we take the, the consent agenda first um, and then we'll go into the individual items listed out if, if there are there any others? Mr. Mayor? 
Alder, uh, Alder, I'm not going to call you an alderman again. City Attorney Decker. <laughs> Maybe a promotion, huh? Um, <laughs> uh, just to be clear, too, on for number 39 on the agenda, there were two names that License and Health discussed today, uh, Lawrenson and Walls, that they yes. did not want to include on the approval. So I believe, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Vitale, yes. would you like those removed as well? Yes, you will. Okay, so I believe last time we called those like 39 A and B or something like that. Yeah, it would, it would be Lawrence and Walls from that list. Okay. The remaining individuals in the list would be included in this consent agenda though. Okay, correct. Yeah. Thank you. And also just procedurally, because there was a motion to refer to safety and development for a number 21 and 24, mm -hmm. that uh, that would require a majority vote before the consent agenda is approved, just to remove it. Okay. But number 28 automatically is divided at the request of Alderman Rowe. Um, 18. Mayor Devine. Yeah, Mayor Devine. Yes. Uh, I have a question, Attorney Decker, because when we started out with this consent agenda, uh, you're, uh, I thought you opined that any older person could remove any item from the consent agenda without any vote from the council. It was just the older person's wish that it be taken off the consent agenda. Yes, and that, for example, is what Alderman Rote has done in that he removed it from the consent agenda for a vote later tonight. However, in order to refer it to a committee for discussion outside the council, it would take a majority vote to make that referral. Okay, so the distinction is if we're going to hold it for discussion at a later date, that takes a vote. That's okay. correct. Thank you. Okay. So the attorney is going to now advise we should take up the motion to refer items 21 and 24 to committee. Correct. That, that's an order at okay. this time. And there is a motion from Alderman Lysak. Is there a second? A second. We're going to give that to Vitaly again. Um, <laughs> Thank you for the bonus, Mayor. Yeah, don't work for you. Um, all in favor of referring items 21 and 24 to safety and development, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. Those two items are referred. Now, should we take item? Number I'm sorry? Eight, number 18 would be the next one, the yeah. amendment made by 18's uh, amendment Alderman from Haas. Haas. Alderman Haas, do you want to formally move the approval of the amendment? Yes, I, I move for approval of item 18 as amended. Second. And a second by Alderman Weigel. Any discussion? Okay, hearing none. Uh, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Elder Person Keen. Aye. Lysak. Aye. Ranky. Aye. Rote. Aye. Stefanski. Aye. Tenorio. Aye. Vitale. Aye. Weigel. Aye. Grisham. Aye. Haas. Aye. 10 in favor, zero opposed. Motion carries. And then Mr. Chair. Yep. Item 28. Uh, 28 has been divided for, for discussion later tonight, does not need a motion. Um, but number 39, a motion to refer Lorison and Wells back to License and Health would be in order at this time. Okay. Motion was made by Vitaly. Yes. Okay, is there I would like to make the motion to refer okay. back to the uh, committee. Second. Thank you. And a second by Alderman Stefanski. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> Ayes have it, those two are referred back to committee. And now we have item 28. That one is going to remain off the consent agenda for vote after the motion for the consent agenda approval is handled. Okay, thank you. Mayor Devine. Alderman Lysak. And I move to adopt, approve, and receive all matters on the consent agenda as presented or recommended by staff, with the exception of the items aforementioned. Second. Second. The motion and a second. Um, there's, there's no discussion. I'll ask the clerk to please call the roll. Elder Person Keen. Aye. Lysak. Aye. Ranky. Aye. Rote. 
Aye. Stefanski. Aye. Tenorio. Aye. Vitali. Aye. Weigel. Aye. Grisham. Aye. Haas. Aye. Ten in favor, zero opposed. Okay. Motion carries. And now we will take up item 28. Chair Divine, I move approval of item 28. Okay. Second. Second, the second by uh, Alderman Weigel. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, I will ask our clerk to call the roll. Alderperson Keen. Aye. Lysak. Aye. Reinke. Aye. Rote. No. Stefanski. No. Tenorio. Aye. Vitali. Aye. Weigel. Aye. Grisham. Aye. Haas. Aye. Eight in favor, two opposed. Motion carries. Um, I believe that concludes our business. Here to mind, I move that we adjourn until our next regularly scheduled meeting, Tuesday, January 19th at 7 p.m. Second. Okay. There's a motion with a second by Alderperson Grisham. All in favor of adjourning? Aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. Thanks, everybody. Happy, Happy New, New Year, all. Happy New Year. Hey, Tom.